Illumin Living presents Bedtime Thoughts with your girl, Dawn. I am so glad that God comforts us in our suffering. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 through 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. I am so glad that God gives us the grace and mercy to be able to be delivered from those things that are hindering us. And when we overcome and we triumph over those things, we are able to be a help and a guide to those who are downtrodden and cast down by these things. It's time to have these conversations, guys. The hard ones. Welcome to another episode of Bedtime Thoughts with your girl, Dawn. It's so great to be here with you all today. I have a brilliant topic for you guys today. Just want to spread a little seeds of encouragement for you. Um, you know, maybe you're watching early in the morning when you first get up and hopefully this will help get your day going. Um, today we are talking about insecurities. <laughs> yes, one of our favorite topics, right? Everybody's insecure about something. Unless you're just completely and totally like into yourself and you're confident. Everybody has an insecurity that creeps up at some point in time. Um. Insecurities can be about your body, about your hair, it could be about the way you sound, or it could be you're insecure about your inabilities or incapabilities or, you know, things that you're just not good at. Um, you know, I know a lot of insecurities could come from, you know, how you were raised and somewhere in the psyche of your mind, how you were developed and and your environment around you had caused you to get insecure about something. Um, I was talk I was reading a survey, and most men are insecure about their inabilities and capabilities. So that they're not doing a good job, or that they can't lift enough weights, or that they can never seem to, you know, get the right girl, or you know, just like the inability to do something that they want to do. Maybe they're not great enough at sports or they're not good enough at whatever musical instrument they're playing. And most women are insecure about something on their body, whether it be their eyes, their nose, their lips, their hands. It could go on for days, you know, um, being a woman myself. There, I do have a body part that I'm insecure about, so I can definitely resonate with that survey. Um, many people tend to have multiple insecurities. There's always that one that sticks out, though. So I want to come to you with our key verse, and I'm going just travel back with me to the very beginning of the Bible. Let's go into Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-seven, and that says. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God created us in his image. Therefore, how he created us, he felt was perfect. I mean, think about it. He created light and he said, that's good. He created the plants and the animals. He's like, yep, that's good too. And when he got down to us, he felt the same way. He created us and he's like, I did that, you know? So if God is like, you know, celebrating our existence, shouldn't we celebrate our existence too? He didn't make any mistakes on us. And a lot of times we get so insecure with ourselves that we try to cover it up. We try to take it away, cut it off, spray it off, or whatever, hide it. You know, because we're insecure about that thing. But, you know, I got like this revelation, right? Because I was like, why we do that? Can't we, you know, you created us like you ain't made no mistake on us. 
but we're not happy with what you made, you know? So we got to go in and we got to become our own creator and create something that's not us. And that's, I wonder how God feels about that. I wonder um, how he feels about us changing the way he made us, you know? I down to, I knew a person who um, changed the way she talked, you know, like just in her adult years, you know, she talked a certain way up, up until she became a certain age where she was like, you know, I'm going to work on making myself a new accent. And so she did. And it was like this weird, fake, drawn out, dramatic accent. And I'm like, you sounded fine, like to us. You know, if we were able to hear her normal voice, we would have no issues. But she had an issue with the way she sounded. She wanted to sound what she felt was better. I was, um, there is a, a uh, show on Netflix right now. It's called Inventing Anna. She was so insecure about her past that she literally created herself a person you know like she reinvented herself that's what she said she reinvented herself because she had so much hate for herself and um she got so like into this lie that as people started to find her out you know she couldn't just stop lying she had to create more lies on top of that so she can keep up with this character that she made because who she really was was starting to be uncovered and discovered by her friends and the closest people around her but she never wanted to talk about her past she never wanted people to dig into her life never ask about her past that would make her very angry because she worked so hard to develop this new character that she created to be herself and that insecurity ruined her it ruined her because when people did find out who she really was, they didn't want to be friends with the made up person. They're like, who are you? We never know who you are, you know? And it was really sad, you know? This girl was really broken and very young. Um, and I think about insecurities even within myself. The biggest thought to take from here is know who you are in God. He made us our, the way he made us for a purpose. And if we walk in our purpose, the way he made us is sufficient. The way he made us is more than enough. Um, you know, just because we're not happy with the way he made us doesn't mean that the way he made us isn't great, isn't beautiful, isn't wonderful. Uh, just to be living on earth is, is, is wonderful. Just to be breathing breath is wonderful. And God took time with us. He made us in his own image, you know. He saw what beautiful was and created us. And then I think we have the nerve to sit there and say, no, this isn't pretty. No, this isn't beautiful. No, this doesn't, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't look right. This doesn't seem right. And all the while, we're probably just breaking his heart, you know? Especially when we take that image and we distort it to say what we think is beautiful or to make it what we think is the way to go. Um, I will say that the image that you have before you when you look in the mirror is precious. And maybe you didn't get enough compliments on it and maybe that's what makes you insecure. Maybe you didn't find yourself beautiful and don't find yourself beautiful. But I want you to remember this. God made you in his image. And that's what makes you beautiful. The statement of um, that says, 
beauty is in the eye of the, of the beholder. It has been taken so many directions and so many different contrasts. What it really means to me is that God is the beholder and beauty lies with him. And if he believes that we're beautiful, then we are. And that is that. That was that with everything he created. We didn't go changing what light looks like, right? We didn't go changing day and night. We we definitely ain't changing what our thought viewpoints of what heaven and hell look like. When he created heaven, it's beautiful. And I, and I bet everybody who's in heaven right now are rejoicing over that fact. And they're not changing anything about it. When you think of what heaven looks like in your mind, it's a beautiful place, isn't it? It's paradise. <laughs> it's, and that's what he thinks about us too. The, like the same thing, you know. He didn't. He didn't question his existence. He didn't question our existence when he made us. He made us perfectly the way he wanted us, and that is a beautiful thing. And we should bask in that. Um, I'll leave you with five thoughts that can help with insecurity. Um, and I think in this moment, I'm talking to myself as well. Number one, take the time to love on yourself. Those things that you don't like about yourself. Be honest with yourself and discover why it is you don't like those things. But don't hide it. It makes you uniquely you, and that's the most beautiful thing about being in a diverse region that everyone is different. There's There should be no one trying to look like anyone else, which leads me to number two. Put down media. If it's infiltrating your brain, and I will say this, in teen years, this happens the most get so caught up in what media tells us what we should be, what we should look like, how she, how we should be. We see other people on social media advancing and, or enhancing. And we want to do the same thing. But media is a cover for reality. Think about the magazines that are sitting in your home right now. Someone touched those up. Those are, they didn't just walk in front of the camera regular and say, hey, that's beautiful. We're going to print that. No, I worked in the magazine industry for a little bit, too. And I've seen all of the pretty pieces that come with it. It's and it's so much that people think that is real and it's not. So don't let media infiltrate who you are. Know who you are in God. Know your purpose. That's number three. If you don't know your purpose, have a conversation with God about who you are. It's very important to not leave this earth never knowing your purpose. It's very sad. And it can be a lost and winding road when you don't know who you are. And when you are, you're gonna have, when you know who you are, you have that confidence. You have that confidence, and it's never gonna leave you because you know who you are. You know what you were designed for. You know where you belong, and nothing can change your mind about it. No conformity. You cannot be convinced. You cannot be persuaded. Know who you are. And number four, keep on developing. Keep on developing. As humans, we make mistakes. And those mistakes teach us lessons. So just because there was a mistake or two in your life, don't warn it off. Those are supposed to teach you lessons. They were meant to be your textbook. You don't know everything and you can't do everything but the one things that you can do keep developing them even if you just have one talent keep developing it 
Even if you just have three talents, keep honing on those skills. Even if you have five talents, keep on developing yourself. It's okay with the things that you can't do, but when you can do it, own it. Own it. And number five, there's so many on this. Number five, do not let your inabilities and your flaws determine who you are. Don't ever let that one body part that you can't stand about yourself defy you and call yourself ugly. Do not let that one thing you're not good at defy you and say you're not athletic, you're not talented, you're not brave, you're not ambitious. <laughs> we are all so different and we're so good at so many different things because think about it. We need to be different for the world to go round. I was just sitting in a drive through the other day and this girl was so good at just getting all the orders together. I, I just watched it because I was in awe. Like I've never worked in the food business. So every time I see like the multitasking the way they do, I'm just like shocked, right? I probably would be a complete and total disaster if I got behind that computer. But she was just working the orders, working that. She gave me everything I needed. You know, even when I was talking to her while she was taking the order, she did not at at any time taking taking care of me you know like defy me or whatever and she still gave her attention to the other person she was speaking to whereas communicating with her co-workers getting the orders right and i thought what that is just crazy and awesome even though i could never do something like that he made someone who could and that's what makes the world go around. If we were all the same, we would all be doing the same job, looking the same way, having the same things, and it would be a very boring life. What makes life interesting is us being a melting pot of differences. And those differences are accepted by everyone. And so if we become this diversity, this diverse nation, we become this beautiful picture that God wanted us to be. So many different people coming together for the same common goal. That's what he created us for. We are to be the salt of the earth. And I think that's such a, such a beautiful story. I think life is such a beautiful story. So I'll leave you with this today. Know who you are. Know who you are in God. And find your purpose. I hope you enjoyed today's session and I gave you some good nuggets of knowledge. Come back and see me next week with another great session, another great topic on today like no other. And as always, guys, it's time to have these conversations, the hard ones.